this is another one um uh west banco okay yeah they're out there in ohio or west virginia yeah yeah so they have a streamlined application now here's the thing here's the thing they have two different systems that process these applications if you go in branch they're going to pull your transunion if you apply mm. online right here, they're going to pull your experience. Now, look at this real quick. Small business flex line, up to 50,000, credit score-based approval. Mm. Um, I, didn't, I didn't give them any docs. I think I volunteered my information, which I did, they didn't ask for. But I was just like, here, look, this is, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not fronting. This is, you know, I'm, I really make this much. Whoops. Uh, but anyways, West Banco, um, just 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 to go back to 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 this, right? When when you do the application, they're gonna ask you what is your what was your your gross revenue. In this case, um if you haven't filed an extension, they're gonna want to see 2022. If you filed an extension, they can still go based off of 2021. Mm. But they're gonna ask you how much was your revenue. So they'll go exactly 10% of what you put. So if you put 500,000 you you they're going to approve you for a 50,000 limit. If you put 325,000, they're going to give you a 32,500 limit. That's just how they they are. Exactly 10%. So just to go back um Dang. so 10 10% 10% is kind of like standard. Yep. What makes West Bank I mean what makes BMO Harris a game changer is that they'll give you up to 30%, 30 Jeez, of your gross bro. revenue. Mm. Not your not your net you're gross. Oh my gosh, bro. So the data points on this transunion personal hard inquiry schedule of business debt, global debt service coverage ratio. Like, like mm -hmm. I just, like I just told you, um, and, and, um, so, so they're going to calculate that. So they're going to want to see, uh, the, the, the way they calculate it is they, they go based off of your, um, your, so, so, they can calculate your, let, let me just explain this, right? The, the underwriter can calculate your global debt service coverage ratio off of a couple pieces of information that, that you supply, mm -hmm. right? First of all, they're going to pull your personal credit. Your personal credit is going to show what you owe, mm -hmm. what debts you owe, what your balances are, right? Mm -hmm. So they have that part. Your personal tax returns are going to show your personal income, mm -hmm. your business tax returns is going to show your business income, your schedule of business debt is going to show your business debt. So mm -hmm. with those four pieces of information, your personal credit, your schedule of business debt, and your personal and business tax returns, they can calculate what your global debt service coverage ratio is. Now there is way, there are ways where you can like maximize it. If you're able to like hide your personal utilization or whatever like that, you know, there's ways of like uh, doing that. But here's another thing too, I, I will say with the schedule of business debt, they're not actually pulling your, they're not actually like going out and investigating. Like for example, they're not, they're only going to know what debt you have based on what you put on the form and based off of the information they, they pull, let's say from like, uh, if you have like a UCC fi filing, right? Mm -hmm. So they're not going to, so like part of the information here is what you volunteer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if you put, you know, if you leave something off, then it's not going to be factored in. Not to, not to say, you know, say that you shouldn't be honest and truthful, but, you know, the schedule of business that is uh, something that is part of the application that you have to fill out. And, they're only going to be able to verify what you put based on what you voluntarily put. And when they, you know, they're going to run the secretary of state, they're going to see if you have anything filed against any uh, liens against the business. That's basically what they do. Um, and that's pretty much it, bro. Like, that's crazy. It, like, like, and, and, and so to go back, they have like a program, um, they they yeah. have a Nevada footprint, or they they strictly uh, out there in Philly with my man Dennis and you. Nah, 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 nah. From what I was told, I mean, and, and you could hit him up. You gotta see his telephone. I love number. Romans. I love Romans, man. His 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 email address. Yep. From what he was telling me, they operate nationwide because um, he was basically saying he works with people, businesses that are outside of the 
branch footprint, like someone like me. Okay. So he's in charge of like certain like areas. Um, and I, that's what I asked him. Cause I'm like, bro, there's no BMO Harris's in Maryland, but he was like, no, that's okay. They actually have it so that they can operate in all 50 states, you know, in terms of business lines of credit. And as a matter of fact, here, let me, let me pull this up, man, because this, this actually, uh, shares a little bit more um insight into it um so but i'm pretty sure there there's no restrictions you can go the foreign entity route but what i'm saying is that you may not have to do that let's reach out to roman and we'll see yeah 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 let, 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 uh okay let me see a specialty program right so they had this you know women business black and latino nice. native american nice. owned businesses so this was like a, a, a uh, um <laughs> they lowered the underwriting criteria for these specialty programs. So I think from what I was told, you need a minimum of like a 660 transunion. Ease, bro. And you can get up to 50,000. Okay. A, a line of credit. So you could double dip a line of credit and or business credit card up to 50,000. And this is a, this is, um, you know, so, so, okay. Linda current available within BMO branches, um, Arizona, but 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 this is um uh, th th there's more to this because yeah. um from what i was told it doesn't matter like you could be in a in a in a state um let me see so to 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 uh so right here right down oh, i think this is for this program not generally this is for like the this specialty program so like less than 10 million uh, fifty-one percent owned by individuals. So, so this is a separate program from their regular business line of credit. Um, Chicago so right, and Florida in the house, right there, man. Right. So it says Solid. physical business address, or in the instance of no, the business has no physical address, a mailing address for their headquarters located in one of the states. All right, Fulton Bank line of credit play, right? So, yes. Let's talk about this for a second. So, this is another TransUnion, TransUnion uh, play. Risk deal so, estate. Ooh, real estate secured line of credit too for my so, real estate investors. All right, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this, right? Mm -hmm. So um, let's talk about the, the real estate line of credit, right? For those real estate investors, right? Yes. One of the challenges with getting like, let, let's say first, because because I try to do this um, myself, right? With Truist, right? I try to get a secured line of credit using non-owner occupied real estate, right? Mm -hmm. But Truist won't do it for a res if it's zoned residential you can't collateralize it for secured line of credit it has to be zoned commercial, commercial. okay right to, to be able to collateralize it so the problem is let's say for those who are investing in short-term rentals long-term rentals airbnbs people who are buying buying these and renting them out and you have equity locked up in it so instead of doing a cash out refinance 